Thank you, Dr. Valeski. We have a couple of presentations. We'll start with learning across the district. Who's going to introduce that one this evening? Uh, come on up. Well, it looks like we've got some science from what you've got coming up here. All right. Welcome. Hi, I'm Angela Scarpa. I'm the fifth grade math and science teacher at Central, and I'm here with Krishna, Jack, Maggie, and Carolyn to present our ecosystems unit that we're doing right now. Hello, I'm Maggie Liu, and today I'm going to be talking about the ecosystem. In science, we are learning about ecosystems. Ecosystems are environments where living and non-living things depend on each other to survive. We've been studying land environments and aquatic environments. Hello, I'm Hello, I'm Jack, and I'm sharing with you the terrarium part of our project. We created a land environment called the terrarium by planting mustard, alfalfa, and rice seeds in soil. After the plants started to grow, we put crickets and isopods, also known as pill bugs, into the terrarium. We are observing how the animals survive on their own in, in their landed habitat. I'm Carolyn, and we created an aquatic environment called an aquarium by putting elodia, algae, and duckweed and <laughs> plants into the water. We added mosquito fish and pond snails into the aquarium. We observed how the aquatic organisms survive on their own in the aquatic environment. Hi, I'm Krishna. Once we finish building our terrarium and aquarium, we combine the two ecosystems and, and to create an eco-column. We are going to observe how the two ecosystems affect each other. <coughs> this, is, this is the eco-column, and on top is the terrarium with all the animals, the isopods, and the crickets, and down here is the aquarium with the f um, the mosquito fish and the pond snails. That's very cool. Thank you very much, Mrs. Scarpa and the fifth graders of Central. Is there any other presentations? All right. Hello, my name is Meryl Courtney, and I'm one of the fourth grade ILA teachers at Central. And with me, I have Luke, Mia, Amaya, and Sneha, and they're here to present something from our recent research fair. Hi. Yesterday at school, we had a research fair. In the research fair, we presented, along with a board we created about some topics, a slideshow. Today, we're going to share with you the board. And we did feature articles, and a feature article is, a feature art, it, it has an anecdote or story, opinions, a strong voice, and it has, and it has um, uh, a, fa and facts. I wrote a feature article about colonial clothing. I will read a part from my article. Young children and babies wore dresses, even boys. Finally, at the age of six, boys got breached, which meant they could forget dresses and wear kneeling pants like their dads. Girls always wore the same thing as their mothers, even when they were children. I wrote an article about food in the colonies, and I'd like to read you a small section. Popularity in food. Colonists ate certain types of food more than others. Corn made a major part of their diets, how did beans and squash? They are the most popular foods because they were grown a lot. I also wrote a feature article about colonial clothing. Now I'm going to read a section from my article. <coughs> men versus women. There are many different things that men and women wore. Also, some of their clothes were very hard to do things in. For example, women and girls had to wear stays for their whole life. Also dresses. And did you know that all, that all boys wore dresses at the age of six? And I know you think that's funny, but that's what colonial boys wore at that time. Men wore three-cornered hats, coats, shirts, doublets, and breeches. 
A stay is a piece of fabric that women and girls wear for their whole life, which makes their back straight and it's hard for them to bend, play, and sit. A doublet is a long sleeve tight fitting jacket, <coughs> and breeches are short pants below the knee. Also, I read an article about um, indentured servants and slavery, and one part is indentured servants. Indentured servants are like the early slaves in the 1600s. Indentured servants come from all around the world, like Scotland, England, Netherlands, and Russia. Indentured servants worked in fields and farms, just like slaves, but indentured servants had a contract with their master is their own. And the contract said how much years they would work for their master and how they got paid. Also, when indentured servants were done with their contract, they could be an owner of another slave or indentured servant. In colonial times, only the colonies had indentured servants. But when the years went on, more and more slaves were shipped to the colony and there were no more indentured servants left. Thank you, Central. I think we're moving up to the middle school now. Hi, I'm Amanda Ingardiola. I am a teacher at Hammershold. Um, in the back are my colleagues, Kelly Perno and Diane Heilman. Together, we organize a Relay for Life, which is, uh, for those of you that don't know, a, pr a program designed to raise money for the American Cancer Society. Um, Last year, our school fundraised over $20,000, and we are hoping to top that goal this year. So with me tonight, I have Fiona Liu and Raya Priolo, who are going to talk to you a little bit about the fundraising efforts we do and about our Relay for Life. Hi, I am Raya, and at Hammershold, we have a big year-end event. It is our Relay for Life, which teaches us about preventing cancer and saving lives. All students in Hammershall participate in our Relay for Life. This year, it is on June 10th. My grandma died of cancer last. My grandma died of cancer last year. Was my first time participating, and I felt it was important to support this because through the fundraising we do, lives can be saved. Everyone at one time has been affected by cancer. You may know someone that has lost their life to cancer, or someone that right now is fighting to celebrate their next birthday. If we can save just one life and make people aware of ways to prevent cancer, our Relay Day at Hammershold will be a huge success. Hi, I'm Fiona Liu, a seventh grade student at Hammershold. Last year, I designed the winning t-shirt for our Relay for Life event. When I saw this um, contest, I was excited because it was a chance for me to use my artistic talent and contribute to my school community. Plus, it was a way for me to get involved in our school's Relay for Life and raise money for an important cause. The procedure of drawing the design was not difficult, but rather coming up with an idea was. The theme of hope is more challenging to express than other themes because there is no direct symbol for it, like a heart can symbolize love. The phrase hope for the best kept popping into my mind as I was sketching different designs. Then I realized that the complete phrase was cross your fingers and hope for the best. From, from there, I saw my way through. I drew cross fingers, but on the page it seemed rather plain. I wanted simple words to be written on the shirt, but not as basic as the original phrase. Soon, I realized that I didn't really know what the whole definition of hope was, and so I found that putting the definition for hope on the shirt would be a perfect finishing touch. It was exciting to submit my design and see it chosen as one of the top 10 designs. During lunch, I was also excited to see students voting on their choice for best design. Finding out that I won was a very proud moment for me, and I felt extremely honored just to be a part of this event. Seeing my design on so many t-shirts really struck me. Last year, we sold over 525 t-shirts. For me, it showed the way our school came together to support the American Cancer Society in our Relay for Life event. On the day of our relay, it was astounding to see so many excited faces and to have so much fun with my friends while supporting such a good cause. The event taught us about the importance of charity and giving back to those in need. I hope this year's winner will be able to experience the same pride and accomplishment in supporting this great cause and see their design on over 750 shirts, which is our goal this year. Although we don't know the winning design yet, t-shirts can be pre-ordered for $10. $6 of your purchase is donated directly to the American Cancer Society. I hope you'll join me in supporting this great cause and helping HMS reach its goal this year. 
order forms are available by the door. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Any additional? Okay. Let's take just a one minute recess in case we've got some folks that wanted to, I guess, go. Um, some of our presenters just now, they may want to go off and do some more things to present to us in a future meeting. <laughs> we'll give you a minute. 